Hello everyone, good morning and welcome to this webinar where I'll be introducing Microsoft's business intelligence solution, Microsoft Power BI. In the next 30 minutes or so, I'll be explaining what Power BI is all about and showcasing some of the key features and functionalities available. And I'll be hopefully making it clear to you how your business can adopt Power BI to gain those vital insights into your business data. This is um, Power BI. It's a web based application, so you access it via a browser. Um, if you are familiar with Office and you have a Power BI license, you will have the Power BI icon available in the, the, um, the overview and you obviously click that, you'll get taken through to the Power BI web service. Before I go into explaining about some of the data and the charts and this particular sales scenario, I'm just going to show you some of the uh, the features, the standard features um, of how you can collaborate and how you can work with Power BI and then we'll move on to the, um, the demo a little bit more about the data. So in this screen here, you can see a dashboard. Now Power BI, when you do a, a Power BI setup, it consists of dashboards and reports. Now a, Power BI, a dashboard is designed to have the, the high level, the key reports that you want to see um, a high level for overview um, based on the underlying report. So some of the key charts can be pinned on a dashboard that you can see from a high level basis. But when you click on one of these particular um, charts, you then get taken down to the underlying report where there's a lot more information. You can also um, view this in a mobile form. So like I mentioned, the accessibility is good for Power BI. There is a, a Power BI app um, that it is on any app source or um, or, or the Google store uh, stores and you can see here how the data can be visualized in a mobile form and that just makes that data so accessible. It's published in the cloud. You can access it wherever you are on the go. Uh, that becomes very powerful for people that are on the road regularly. You also got a possibility of adding a dashboard theme as well. So there are some standard themes that come out of the box. You have the light theme dark theme where you can see there it just makes the data pop out a little bit more and you've also got a possibility of uploading your own theme if you want to make it fitting with your own branding your co company branding for example okay so that's a bit some of the sort of high level um features for example um we've also mentioned here on a dashboard level we have some artificial capabilities artificial intelligence capabilities so if I was to click on ask a question about your data and then pop in a um, question, which will be the total leads by account industry, for example, then it comes back with, it reads that information, it knows what I'm asking and it can go away and pull back the results straight away instantly there. I can then pin that visual if I want to have it as part of a dashboard, uh, for example, or I can even extend it further and I might say actually I want to actually turn this into a tree map and what it does is then represents the data in a different form so really using making it easy for you to be able to query the data to find certain information you do need to you do need to get familiar with the way that you ask the questions but once you've got familiar with that it's very easy to find that information and you're not just limited to the reports that are already pre-built and the way the data is designed you can ask those questions to query the data and get it in the format that you want. OK, so that's the, the Power BI capabilities there. Sorry, the artificial in, uh, intelligence capabilities. Um, now, if you. If we go into the, the data in a little bit more uh, detail and about the sort of sales scenario. So this, like as I mentioned before, this is a dashboard. It's the high level overview of a lot of the reports. But if I was to click onto one of these reports, it then takes me down one of these charts. It then takes me down to the lower level. So, for example, if I was to click on to new leads trend, for example, it then takes me down to a lower level where you can see that we have a pay pages uh, here and there's a lot more visuals and reporting going on on those particular pages. Now this one here for this scenario, we have a lead analysis page, we have sales performance, we have a win loss analysis, sales pipeline and sales leaderboards. So these pages are can be designed, you can have as many pages as you want really here and you can split your data out into different sections. What you also have as common on all pages is you have this filter option here. Now this filter option is really good to be able to filter 
the either this this particular page or filter on all pages. So this works well for when you want to maybe view the data based on a physical period, maybe a, phys a quarter, might be a month, might be a year, or you might want to take data in for several years to be able to look at the differences between that data. Um, and you can play that filter across all pages. So the user has the flexibility to be able to change that uh, on each page. So making um, the filtering possibilities very easy to work with. Well, you also um, have a standard with most Power BI uh, reports. You can actually switch this off, but it's a really nice feature is that the, the forms are dynamic and interactive. So for example, sorry, the reports are um, uh, dynamic and interactive. So if you are to click on a certain option, for example, if I were to click on the amount of cold leads uh, that we have uh, currently open, you click on it here, the rest of the charts get on this page get filtered by that particular criteria. So I can see on the map here the cold leads and where they are located in the country, for example. Likewise, if I was to click on warm, it would then show me the warm leads, um, the warm leads in the country and filter the rest of the data so I can see trends on on warm leads, for example. OK, so we have a uh, I've got well, I'll go through the, the different pages to showcase some of the chart types and explain um, what the um, they are good for and how this can help a sales organization. But before I do that, I just wanted to go through some another standard feature that you get on most um, chart types is that you can drill down to a lower level of the data. So here we have a chart that is showing leads, open leads by source. And if I wanted to drill down further and actually see OK, we have this word of mouth, um, word of mouth lead source. I want to see what sales representatives have these leads assigned to them. So who are the most who are the busy with uh, getting the, the name out there for, of the business and doing their job effectively. So if I click on this little option here to drill down, I then it then becomes active to drill down. When I click on the chart, it then takes me down to the next level and I can see that actually six have been assigned to Jessica six have been assigned to Kib and six to Diana. Um, so I can see how that split is and that can work with any option here. We can take it down to uh, a lower level and drill down into the data. So like I mentioned before, there's a real benefit there because you're not just got those static reports. You can go down a lower level as well. So there's some really nice, nice features there to, uh, to be able to just um, to be able to filter the data at a lower level. OK, so come at some of the chart types here. Um, we have obviously a card, which is quite good just to get some high level information and to sum up some of the figures. So for this particular lead, we have conversion rates, we have lead qualification rates, and these can all be put together by sort of calculated fields in the background. We would use the data there, sum it all up and then create uh, some calculated fields to present that information. Obviously, when certain filters are there, you can see that the rest of those calculations get filtered as well. So some nice, uh, again, some nice filtering possibilities. We have standard bar charts and line charts. We have um, pie charts, for example, but there are also some ones that track trends well and visualize trends. Uh, and we have the uh, sort of the funnel option here as well, where it orders, um, it orders um, leads by industry by the ones that are most popular as well. If I click down to the next option here where we have sales performance, you'll see some other options here where we have a sort of a trend going on here to, to plot the the currency, uh, sorry, the uh, the revenue over a certain period as it goes on in the months. For example, we have a tree map to show the pop popular industries by one revenue and the per proportion of that revenue across those different industries. Uh, we have a donut chart so we can see the revenue that's been won, how has that been split across the territory? So we can see here, Southeast is doing pretty well and also the Midlands. Um, we also have a gauge here as well, which is a good thing for sales uh, managers to get an overview of. This shows here that you have, um, it's one, one revenue versus estimated revenue. So overall for this particular period, the estimated revenue being, it's been 3.22 million, but actually the one revenue was only 2.86 million. Now that is good information for the um, for managers to see that when um, their sales personnel are estimating uh, opportunities and what the money that's going to come in. So the forecast reporting, they are slightly out on their estimations from the actual money that is brought in from those deals. 
You can also plot certain trends as well. So not only do you have your um, your your figures in bar charts, you can cert plot certain trends on there as well to get an overview of how to visualize the, the, the progress there or to highlight areas that need improvement. If we go over to the next one here where we have the win loss analysis, this is also another good example here where of trends plotting certain trends for won revenue and lost revenue, the averages. Uh, so you can see that on the, on the chart. But what you can also see on the left hand side here is there are some on, on page slicing that you can do as well. So here we can limit the industry. Um, we can actually select certain territories or even down to the salesperson as well, the owners of these um, opportunities. So for example, if I wanted to see uh, the Midlands and I wanted to say for consulting, for example, then I can filter the opportunities based on the Midlands and then also go a further step and say I only want to see the um, the opportunities that have, have won or lost for the consulting industry uh, in the Midlands. And then that leads me on to another nice feature that comes with Power BI is to be able to bookmark certain filters as well. So if you are looking at these reports regularly, maybe daily, maybe weekly, and you don't want to have to filter the information every time you come in, or you've got a particular campaign that's going on and a particular focus on a certain industry, what you can do is you can set a, make those filters on the, on the reports, <clears throat> on the pages, and then you can set those as bookmarks. So for example, here, I might say um, social services, for example, in the Midlands, and I can go and click a bookmark <clears throat> and I'll add a new personal bookmark and say Midlands social services. I'll just put social, click save. And then if I was to then remove these filters and go to buy bookmark for social, you'll see then that those filters are applied there. So that's a, a nice, uh, nice way of, of, of um, filtering the data, but making it easy for the user if they are using the same types of filtering every time. And then I saw that leads on to another functionality uh, that is this been introduced uh, and, and adds good value for collaboration is the commenting. So if I click on comments on a particular chart, so a sales manager might be looking at this information and going something doesn't quite add up to me here. What is this figure all about? Whatever that might be, what they can do is they can actually loop somebody else in into the organization and say at, for example, uh, Stuart Goldwater, um, what is this figure about, for example, and I'll click post, and then that comment has been added. Uh, Stuart will get the notification to say that he has been uh, has been commented on a particular Power BI report, and then when Stuart comes onto this particular report, he will then see it in this particular format because there's no filters on there. But that might be no good for him to be able to, uh, to really identify what the sales manager was talking about. And so then he can click on this particular option here to bookmark it and it'll take him to exactly where he was looking at when he saw that particular figure, making it a lot clearer. And then that can, you can then communicate back and forth with that person and chat over the report. So really aiding that collaboration between teams and also departments as well. OK, so we have just to showcase some of the other functionalities that are available. If we go on to the pipeline, we have some other chart types here with the funnels and also plotting trends. So we can see sales pipeline by expected completion by month. So we can see the months ahead for the pipeline. And also we can identify within that pipeline what stage the opportunities are as well. Are they close to being closed? Are they you know, very early on in the process? So you can see that split there, which is creating good visuals for estimating um, revenue that is going to land in the future. And the last one I want to show is the uh, option to be able to add grids on here as well. So you're not just limited to charts. You can also add grids on here as well. So for example, if I wanted to see the sales leaderboard and I can see that uh, Diana has done quite well this particular period, if I click on her ones here, we can then see that we have um, the results here filtered based on the uh, based on opportunities won by Diana. So we can see the information here, the revenue assigned, the actual revenue and the time, et cetera, then when that was done. So some good, good opportunities to view the data in 
uh, more visual, um, sorry, in a, in a grid form to get some it, the, the details behind the data as well. OK, so if I switch back to um, lead analysis, just our main screen, when we've got what I want to show, go through now is some of the export capabilities. So we often get asked the question, OK, it's great to have these reports, but I need to put this information into a management pack. I need to set, share it with my directors or the board, for example. So what Power BI have done is they've created some good functionality to be able to export to PDF um, or to PowerPoint presentation as well. So what you can do is if I click the PowerPoint um, option, it will then start to create a PowerPoint presentation. Now that can take a couple of minutes to download. So here's one I created earlier where we can where you can see here that we have the um, the all of the pages that have been put out to a PowerPoint page. So if I click through, for example, we can see the different reports here and the different pages of those reports. So a really easy way to be able to get a, um, a management report to be able to um, to be able to present to uh, to the board or senior directors, for example. What you can also do with the exports PDF is not just have it how it is at the moment. You can also filter the information before you actually send it out to a PDF or PowerPoint. So, for example, if I wanted to just show a certain um, territory or I was a manager in a cert for a certain um, sales team, you could filter it on that information and then take it out to PowerPoint. So some good uh, possibilities there as well. And then for a um, for other options with um, uh, to aid sort of collaboration and automation, you have this subscribe option as well, where you can subscribe to a particular uh, page. So I was a click subscribe here, add a new subscription, and I can define that I want to receive a, an overview of this report on a particular basis. So it could be daily, um, it could be daily to be able to um, receive it. And what it does is it sends you an email with a snapshot of the particular report at that moment in time. So it might be you said it that's just before the data is being refreshed and then you're going to get an email sent with that report in there uh, as, a, as an image. Uh, so you can see an overview of that information uh, and that's been sent to you automatically. And then if you click it, it then takes you through to the report itself. OK, so one of the last things I want to show you um, around some of the features and functionalities is the different chart types. So I mentioned that there is a whole marketplace of chart types and and um, um, yeah, chart types and, uh, and and graphs. So if I go to edit here and click um, edit and then we see we have some visualization options. These are the standard ones that are out of the box, um, but you also have an option here to go and get more visuals. So if I click on the get more visuals, I then get taken to uh, App Source, which is Microsoft's um, marketplace for applications. Uh, there's also a Power BI section for visuals, and you can see in the list there are a large amounts of visuals that people have been designing for Power BI that can be adopted by your organization. So you'd add them here, and then you'd be able to then add them to your charts. There's also a possibility as well, uh, if you're that way inclined, to build your own chart types and publish them, um, but that it gets obviously a little bit more complex. Um, and you'd obviously have to have some specific needs to be able to do that as well. Um, so, but that is, is a possibility.